This is the Mazda CX-5. And this is the Honda CRV. And you're watching carguide.ph. <laughs> After stroking the YouTube algorithm with that uh, mundane intro, we can now talk about the cars. So Yuri, what particular car do you have right here? Well, this is the 2024 Mazda CX-5 Turbo. So it's a top-of-the-line model, but surprisingly, this particular CX-5 has been around in the market since 2016. Now I understand it's probably going to last longer than some relationships out there, but what's amazing about Mazda is that they're able to make the vehicle fresh and up-to-date. This is actually the sixth update ready for the CX-5. Oh, wow, okay. Because this one, if I'm not mistaken, this is the fifth generation. So compared to this one, this is spanking new. Yes, this was just launched last year. So yeah. Going back to the CX-5, the things I like about it is that Mazda is able to play with colors. So with the Zircon Sand, which is this one, it's one of the more interesting colors in the market out there. So it, it joins uh, colors like Soul Red, Machine yeah. Gray. So in terms of palette choices, I would have to say that it's a, li a little bit more daring, a little bit more different than what, say, Honda would offer in this Yeah, movie. compared to this one, this already starts to look like a plain color. I mean, I came from this one, but this one's more artistic. It's like when you drove in a while ago, it's like a work of art, well, so yes. to speak. Yeah, it, it sounds a bit more cliche, but yes. I mean, yeah. that's how Mazda treats their vehicles, so it's been a work of art. And for the 2024 update, which uh, by the time you guys watch this, uh, the, even the non-turbo variants will also get it. Um, for the updates, you get things like the, the new LED headlights right here, a cleaned up bumper, so get that. They removed the front uh, fog lights right here. They sculpted the front end, the bumpers in particular, to look more like the Mazda 3 or the CX-30. So those are the more interesting details that they've done with this update. Yeah, and then for this one, what I did appreciate is once I saw it in person, I'm like, wow, I can see their approach on this one to be on the Civic territory. You know, let's face it, the Honda Civic, there's a big hype going on, especially with the Type R. Yeah. So it's nice that we got a lot of those cues and placed it here. Yeah, what I like about the new CRV, for example, is the way they made the front grille now more upright. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's those little things that make the car look more menacing, more sportier than it was before. I mean, let's admit, the CRV has always been known as like a mom mobile compared yeah. to the other compact SUVs out there. <laughs> yeah. But with this generation, yeah. they've added a bit of masculinity. In yeah, it. so like when I saw it, I'm like, hey, parang for the first time, baga yung uh, CRV sa akin. That's true. And of course, it's the first time also that the CRV gets the RS treatment, right, Nick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, uh, so if you want to get the RS look, you'll have to get the top of the line, which is the hybrid model. Which is taller? <laughs> well, which I, is a, well, that's I the thing. I don't, I, I don't have um, my tape measures or like uh, top of mind figures right now, but I think visually the CX-5 kind of looks taller. Yeah, uh, if, so we have them side by side and looking at them side by side, this has a few millimeters more height. And yeah. that's even disregarding these aero flaps over here at the that, bottom. That's true. I mean, when we talk about minimum ground clearance right here, it's usually the lowest metal point in the body. So with regards to the CRV, I think they, they mentioned like 207 mm if memory serves correct. But that doesn't include the plastic flap yeah. that you see there for so, aero purposes. Like what I can see right here, if I were to get something more SUV, it's definitely this one. Well, I have to agree with you except for one little point. With the CX-5 Turbo, Mazda's decided to actually color all the fenders. So if you go to the side right here, you'd see that the, oh. the fenders are all body colored, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. if you take it hard enough off-roading, you might see a bit of like <laughs> stone chips or whatever there. So it might be painful for you. Uh, like, luckily, uh, this one. I yeah, know this one also. Yeah, this one also. But if, luckily, if you're going for the non-turbo, which they've just launched, at least the fenders and the side skirts are still colored black. Oh, okay. That's good. Okay. So now that we've talked about the exterior, let's hop into this one. <laughs> okay. So my impressions. I like the, the, the soft touch over here. Like, the, that, like Mazda really knows how to play with like the leathers and the, the textures. And if I'm not mistaken, I actually got to meet the, the, the se parang sensory engineer or something like that. They have an engineer specific to how the buttons feel. Yes, that's quite true. The thing with Mazda is that they're almost like obsessed with compulsive with these kinds of details. So in the CX-5, just like with any other Mazda, if you notice, the, the general look and feel of the car, it's all about using these soft touch but matte finished materials. The reason yeah. for that is that you don't want unwanted reflections to bounce off the, oh, wow. the glass and all that. So yeah. it makes it uh, it makes driving, uh, especially at night or at the strong uh, sunlight, much easier. Yeah, and then the color matching is impressive. The color matching is another thing I like about the vehicle. And uh, for this update, especially for the Turbo, 
real wood trim. I mean, where else can you see real wood trim in this uh, class of vehicle? And, and this is uh, pretty much Napa leather. So it's again ah, the real stuff. And yeah, yeah. It's vented actually. So again, if um, you're faced with the sweltering heat out there, you can just turn on buttons uh, oh, and cool your oh, seats. Yeah. Oh, oh, there. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I can feel yeah. it now. The thing, okay, the things I do like also, I like unlike the CRV that's digital. It's analog, but I like that it's clean looking. Mm. It's not disturbing to the eye. Yeah, I think for people who do love a bit of customization with their gauges, sad to say, even if it has the 7-inch display monitor right there, it's pretty much just stuck in that mode. The yeah. most that you can do would be to change the color scheme, and that's tied into your drive modes. Mm. And uh, at the same time, the only thing... And there you go. There yeah. you go. So sport, normal, that's that's about it. It's, it's very limiting. Yeah, uh, I, uh, for me, like it's maybe not as fancy or high-tech, but it's, I like the clean implementation. That's very true. I mean, I, I hope, but uh, at, at the end of the day, I'm after legibility more yes, than anything else. Yes, exactly. Right? But like, okay, but honest, little disappointment, this head unit. Mm -hmm. uh, especially when you go for something like the CRV, which you'll see later. You could have, you know, had a bigger, better screen. Well, yes. I mean, that is probably one of the little problems with the modern Mazdas out there is that abroad, you do get a more advanced infotainment system, more high res, the, a better OS. But here in the Philippines, we're pretty much stuck with the old Mazda Connect system. So there's a bit of touch touchscreen uh, interface, but very, very limited, and it only ah, works. So it's still touchscreen. Only for low speeds, right? But, but it's you, a safety thing. It's a safety thing. Aside from that, you have to use the knobs yeah. right here. Oh. My biggest disappointment would be the resolution of the 360 camera. So oh. if you try engaging like reverse right now, um, okay. or the door. Let's reverse. So yeah. Ah, there, okay. Yeah, very low res. I mean, at this point, I would just wish Mazda would just stick to like a backup camera at this point too, <laughs> because this is pretty much useless to me. <laughs> yeah, Sorry, yeah. Mazda. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but okay, one thing I do like is that they have this knob over here, mm -hmm. you know, driving on the highway. If you need to manipulate anything, it's nice that it's tactile. And I think that's a big advantage with this system compared to like, what we'll see later that's only touch screen that's true yeah which if you're driving on the highway it's hard to oh answer call <laughs> but yeah other than that the quality is good and considering that it's a like the chassis 2016 but they were able to update it to this level it's still impressive yeah i mean i daily drive for example a 2018 model so that's actually they call it the second a second update this is actually the sixth so Coming from, from that perspective, I've seen like little changes here and there, but you're right. Even if the model came from as early as 2016, the, the right foundations have always been there. Yeah. So that's one of the things that Mazda got right. Yeah. Oh, another thing I'd like to mention, oh, yeah. aside from the seats themselves, the seats are actually one of the newer stuff uh, in, this, in the CX-5. So compared to the old CX-5, they actually changed the construction of the seats altogether. Oh, wow. Um, it's supposed to maintain the natural S shape of your spine and all that, again, for better comfort during long drive. Okay. Okay, now that we got a good rundown of uh, this one, let's now hop to the CRV and oh. compare. Okay, well, stepping from the CX-5 to the CRV, this one feels like the new boyfriend, right? I mean, this is like the more modern car out there, probably a bit more high-tech. But what, what can I say? I mean, compared to the more special CX-5, which is more on the premium stuff, this one kind of loses that luster. Yeah. It's more, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean. And now that I, now that you meant, you mentioned the other one's more matte and less reflective, mm -hmm. now I'm seeing the. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's some interesting stuff here. Like, I, I like the way they actually hit the the, the vents here with this this, yeah. this uh, mesh material right very, here in the dashboard. Very yeah. civic. <laughs> very civic. Actually, it started with the civic. I think they also introduced it in the Accord as well. Mm -hmm. I liked it because it makes it look cleaner. And then what can you say about like the gauges and... Well, yeah, Nix, you did mention that this one um, has a better screen, right? It's one inch bigger only to the Mazda, but yeah. one thing that makes this better is the resolution. Yeah, peddling back what I said about the CX-5, mm -hmm. realizing... <laughs> that, and that's why I like these comparos side to side, because you really see the differences. It's not as bad as I thought for the uh, CX-5. Like, this is better, but... Like, it's not as bad as I thought. Well, I think unless you, like, uh, switch on the the backup camera and stuff, and you know, I guess you'll see the resolution. This yeah. is a lot better. I yeah. mean, I can actually read the, the, the num parking slot numbers over here. <laughs> yeah, it's true. In the CX-5, you can't even make out the plate number of the car in front. Yeah. So, yeah. That says it all. Yeah, that says it all. The gauges, it's fully digital for this one. I think it's a 10.2-inch uh, display. But 
being fancy aside, what I like about it, it still keeps uh, to to Honda's ethos of being easy to use and understand. Yeah, yeah. So, like for me, like both gauges are are great, mm -hmm. and like even it's apples and oranges. They're they're both they both have good implementations because I've experienced. Yeah, it's digital. But there's just so many colors that it's messy to dye. Yes, that's true. That's true. But next, what do you find? Like uh, the, the most common complaint that the people have with Mazdas would be the interior space. How did you actually feel being in the driver's seat? Okay, personally, I like the tightness better. Okay. Of the because it it it's, it harkens to the sports car feel. You want it to feel like a cockpit. But I can tell, like for the general user, they want this more roomy interior. Yeah, I mean, I would have to agree. I, I, I daily drive a CX-5, so I really don't mind the way it looks and feels, or even the way it's more cocooning. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But I guess you're right. For people who are probably more broad-shouldered, I mean, you're broad-shouldered. Yeah, next, no, but, but even even if I'm broad-shouldered, the, the CX-5 sitting on it, it felt good. It yes. felt secure. But this one, at least, it appeals to a wider set because, uh, as, as we mentioned, I mean, the, the, the distance between us here, it's more, it's roomier. <laughs> it's roomier and also, I think, um, it actually feels airier. Bigger windows and stuff, right? Yeah, Thinner yeah. pillars also. Thinner pillars. On the left, though, I can see that the CX-5 is more personal. Mm. And this one's more, uh, I wouldn't say family-oriented, but like, there's more space. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, you could say it is family oriented. I mean, pretty much uh, the CRV is like the most popular compact SUV here in the Philippines for that reason. Most people like buy it as a family, as a starter car for families, especially if you don't need seven seats. Oh, well, the CRV does come with a variant with seven seats, Whoa. but uh, for those that uh, may not necessarily need the third row all the time, the CRV might be a good choice. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now that talking about seats, let's hop into the back and let's check the shoulder room. Yeah. Shoulder go. check. Okay, so speaking of uh, family-oriented, we're now here at the second row to compare the second rows between the two cars. And what can you say about uh, the experience of the second row? Well, we have the driver's seat in my usual driving position. And I have to say, I have short, stubby legs. But at the same time, the, the, there is a lot of interior room right Yeah, here. and so, even for me, there's like like almost all the way back. And yet, I still have like maybe six inches of uh, leg room. That's true. But what I find disappointing is, and I've, this is the first time I've actually experienced it pretty much, is actually the headroom. Um, I'm Again, I'm not exactly the tallest person out there, but because of my gelled hair, it probably it adds two inches to, to my height. Yeah, right? yeah. So, and you don't want it damaged. Of course, know? of course. We all have to be guapo. Right? So what I noticed is that going into the CRV, there was a chance that my hair will, will get messed up. Oh, really? But... I, it's because of this, because I think, if I'm not mistaken, adding a sunroof, you already lose like four or five inches worth of headroom right away. I mean, it does brighten up the cabin, and I understand that's what some people want. But again, for families or those with particularly tall kids or whatever, they might find that a bit limiting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but you know, and uh, it's nice that we have a Type C ports over here for charging. Rear air convents. Then, oh, yeah, and then. Uh, you think we can like still fit Jen here? Like, yeah, I think so. It's, but but it, we're gonna have to like. Yeah, it's gonna be a bit more intimate. But yeah, I think we can fit her right here in the middle. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when I one thing I like about this the CRV is that it offers a lot more uh, movement to the seat. So for example, you can adjust the inc the incline <gasps> like this. Oh wow! So this, I didn't know with, that. with the with the CX five, there are only two levels of recline that you can do. This one's like uh, like it's, it's a lot more. I think it's like uh, one, probably. Two, three, three, four. So there are a lot. Oh, wow. I, I okay, mean, yeah, at, yeah. at the very least, four or five. So yeah, yeah. it's a big advantage right there. Again, I think the CRV wins in a more practical aspect yeah. space. And of course, uh, choice of materials. I can imagine these will withstand um, the use of like kids and pets yeah, and all yeah. that, right? But and since Jen is not here. Yeah. Oh, there are cup holders. There are cup holders here also. And but the armrest that we don't have to get intimate with. Yeah, that's true. But what I probably just don't like about the car is that it doesn't feel as upscale. We're talking about a car worth 2.6 million there Yeah, about. oh, that's right. So uh, it's more functional than it is uh, beautiful. Yeah. Uh, and that's something that we'll see in the CX-5, which I find to be the opposite. Okay, let's hop into the second row. I know a while ago we were talking about your gelled hair, but I noticed that when you were entering here, you didn't have to, you didn't worry. Like it wasn't second nature for you to worry about it. Well, you know what, Nick? It's one of the more surprising things that we've found out during this like head-to-head -head comparison. 
I think it helped because the CX-5 doesn't have that panoramic sunroof. Uh, the CX-5 only has a regular sunroof here. And normally, you don't complain about headroom when you're in the front, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at, at least here, it doesn't eat into any available yeah. headroom. And I think and to that effect, it, it is an advantage. <laughs> in a way, yeah. I mean, oh. for the front passengers, it still gives you a bit of air or a bit of light. But I mean, for the rear passengers, you get more headroom. Yeah. And then for shoulder room, I have to say, Definitely, Jen cannot sit with us here. I mean, you can. You can pretty but, much just but, squeeze her, yeah, but I'm, you can't have her eat lunch. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's no, but, but for me, it's like if she's gonna, if if someone's gonna sit here, especially even as small as Jen, I'm gonna probably be like this. Yeah, you'll probably have to go this way, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like naga away all the time. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's I think one of the problems with the CX-5. It's and I think it's a it's an issue with Mazdas in general. So. The front is always good, but those seated at the back would probably be treated to a bit less. Yeah, room. like because I'm already my knees are already touching. Yeah, that's this is actually here. your seating position. Yeah, You're yeah, yeah. To, yeah. Imagine what's your, what's your height? Like? Uh, six. <laughs> so see, if you're a six footer with that kind of seating position, so imagine if you have a family of like four six footers, uh, it's probably not gonna work. But <laughs> we probably have that. <laughs> but but one thing I like about it is the craftsmanship. Oh, I mean, undeniable. This, the same, yeah, the, the same level of craftsmanship you get in the front. Seats you get in the Here. back, so you get the air condens also, and you no USBs though. Oh, that's the thing. See, uh. what I like about it is they actually hit it. So in, in typical <gasps> Mazda fashion, the USBs are oh right here. Oh my God, it's here! So you get cup holders as well, just like the CRV. You get this tray here, maybe for a cell phone. So for example, you want to put your cell phone right here. So you can do that, and if you want to charge it, you can just snake your cable right here. Yeah, or even like here, like I mean, like you reverse it like this. But wow, okay. Right? Neat. I mean, it's all about Checkmate. like trying to make it as minimalist looking, yeah. very Japanese. So, there yeah, you go. There, the cables will pop. If you're thinking of fitting three people at the back, you'll definitely want the CRV. But mm -hmm. but if you know that you're going to put two at the most, I think this, this has a strong case. Yes, it does, I think. And um, to be honest with you, what I like about this vehicle also is um, the, the level of just how it makes everything feel special. You do give up in in, in, the, in in the sense of a bit of practicality, but again, as you mentioned, if you only are fitting two people at the time anyway, maybe three at the most, or maybe four occasionally, I think the CX-5 would be better. Yeah, better yeah. Choice. Uh, I'm, I'm sort of leaning towards it. <laughs> a little bit. So Yuri, does yours have automatic tailgate? Of course. Hey. This one also has an automatic tailgate. So at least you know see. it's updated. <laughs> Okay, let's check the trunk space. Well, okay, wait. Uh, well, so, oh, wait, mine is this weather deck. But uh, I just want to point out, if you do buy a car, make sure you have mats like these. It saves the, yeah. the rear passenger part. Oh, sorry, the rear trunk part. Okay. Wow. You know what? For a car that looks narrow, that's a lot of trunk space. That's actually true. And most people don't know this, but the CX-5, in particular, the turbo, the trunk cover is actually reversible so if you want a waterproof side there you can actually switch it both sides i mean i won't do it right now because it's uh, yeah yeah you can feel it but uh, yeah. yeah so if, for example if you like go, you like to go hiking you want to put muddy boots you don't have to worry about the carpeted area right here so that's what i like about it wow you I don't still think... get the bow sound the bow speaker right here it's been put inside the the spare tire so it doesn't eat up much space. So yeah, yeah, that's amazing nice. little things. Yeah, you can really see the Mazda engineering. <laughs> and then other than that, it's a okay 60-40 split. And then you Actually, have the... no, Nick, I like to ah. correct you. It's not a 60-40 huh? split. It's a 40-20-40 split. <gasps> so you can put that down. You can actually put down the middle, oh. middle part only. Oh. And you can put the, this one right here. So if you're like loading long stuff, I mean, we don't go skiing here in the Philippines, but if you can imagine anything that's long, you can put it in the middle. Maybe tripods. I mean, you, yeah, yeah. you do a lot of photography and whatever, so you can put like tripods right here. Yeah, in the or butterflies, for example. But yeah, that, that's imp and I like that you can access it through here. You don't have to like do the whole charade of going back and forth. Yeah, I know. I mean, imagine if you're like carrying a lot of stuff, yeah, grocery yeah. and whatever, and then suddenly you need to load stuff. You don't have to like go to the seats and drop your whatever you're carrying. Yeah, Just yeah. Put it right here. Okay, that's impressive. But like, and most of the the one I'm most impressed about is. Considering it's like it looks more narrow from the outside, mm -hmm. so a lot of space. Yeah, I think what Mazdas did here is they they pretty much maximized the available footprint that was afforded to them. So, yeah, I mean with careful engineering and stuff, you good you job can Mazda. Yeah. Okay, so now that we've seen the Mazda, let us go to let's see. So when you have them side by side, it's in terms of this has more height 
It, yes, right? I think this one has more height compared to to the CX-5. But, but with, I think, with it's, it's probably the same, same, right? Yeah. And then you don't have that special uh, all-weather part. Like it's, no, uh, this one's like a more generic one. And get this, because this is the hybrid, you do not get a spare tire. Instead, the battery is right here and you get a tire inflator. So if you do a lot of off-roading, that may be a bit minus. Yeah, yeah, that's a minus. And then here, if I want to put the seats down, can I, I cannot do it from here. No, you can't. With the, with the CRV, it's more traditional. You have to be uh, from there. And get this, the, the mechanism to operate the seats, they're not even here on the top part. Uh, the mechanism what? to drop them... Oh, it's... It's here by the bottom side. See? Ah. So those are the little limiting things uh, with the CRV. But if I guess with with adjustment in time, if you own one, you'll probably get used. Yeah, to it. yeah, yeah. And then, well, I do appreciate this uh, 12 volt charger here. Oh well, yeah. Same with the CX5. There's also ah, there's also yeah, okay. There's also so, one there. so same in the, that department. Yeah, the subwoofer instead of putting it under the trunk with the spare tire, uh, Honda actually put it on the here side. the side. So like, in terms of trunk, this has sheer volume, mm -hmm. but. I'll see. In terms of versatility, though, I think the surprisingly, in, in terms <laughs> yeah, of versatility, I can't the, believe I'm saying this. The, the Mazda will win in certain aspects. I mean, what's amazing about it is they provided that waterproof uh, cargo cover. Yeah, yeah. And for a lot of people, that's a big plus. Yeah, yeah. But like in terms of uh, space, this one's the clear winner. Mm -hmm. But in terms of versatility, I think I'd put it to the. Mazda CX-5, which I can't believe I'm saying because they're not really known to make like interior space. Uh, I know, right? right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I get what you mean, but for, for the CX-5, I think they've probably nailed that aspect for us, right? Okay, so now that we've talked about like the car as a whole, there's one more aspect that we have to do, and that's the driving. Yeah, <laughs> that's probably the most important aspect, Okay, right? so we just came out to the parking lot, and I was telling Yuli a while ago that even at slow speeds, the, the steering is light, don't get me wrong, especially when you compare it to older cars. But it's light, but you can still uh, have good feedback of the road and of your input. So there's a little weight to it, but not enough to make the driving tiring. That's one thing I like about it. And another thing I like about it, like, you know, having driven for a good while the mm -hmm. CRV, this is what I mean by cockpit feel. So visually, you'd be like, oh, like it looks cramped. But in practice, I'm a six foot guy. My knees aren't touching anything, my elbows aren't touching anything, and I am in the, the, the good driving position. Like, it's perfect. It's, it's a, it, for, for a compact SUV, it feels like a driver's car. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree there. I mean, if you were to Japanese the entire thing, it's part of Mazda's philosophy, which is Jin by Itai. So, it translates to horse and rider as one. And surprisingly, it's the same sort of feel that you get with every Mazda, whether it's from the Mazda 2 all the way to an MX-5. So yeah. uh, what you get is not just steering that is agile, but also responsive, but the entire the entire driving experience has been catered around that fact. So again, I mentioned earlier that the seats were designed to keep you in place. Yeah. They were also designed to minimize head movement. So when you, when you actually drive the car through more spirited routes, you'll find that it's more comfortable and it's easier also for your eyes to follow the road. I mean, it's yeah. those little things that that would probably set the CX-5 apart from uh, other compact SUVs out yeah. there. Yeah, and you know, for I think for me, one big takeaway is like one way to look at it is the oh the CRV is like way newer, mm -hmm. and which is true, and it'll mm -hmm. hold merit to what what it has. But at the same time, there's a comfort knowing that this is a 2016 platform, but up to 2024, it's proven itself worthy. And, uh, exactly, yeah. <laughs> so at least like when you buy it in 2024, you know at least for almost 10 years it's accounted for. That's true. I mean, we're not we're not saying that nothing has been changed here. I mean, don't get that wrong. What Mazda's done, again, I mentioned that this is already the sixth update. So instead of what other brands do where they do big updates every three years yeah, or four yeah. years, they do incremental updates almost every year. So in this case, being the sixth update, I would I could go into details, but what they did is they changed the tuning of the suspension. They added more rigidity to the platform itself. They changed the seats, as I mentioned. Yeah. So those little things do add up. So compared to even the older CX-5, the newer one is much quieter, much less vibration, rides better, and handles better as well. Now that you mentioned about the noise, I'm like, oh man, it's like... <laughs> I know. It, it's I, nice and peaceful. Yeah, I mean, this car is not a hybrid. The, the CRV does have that hybrid powertrain, so nothing beats 
the uh, the near silence operation of uh, an electric motor but but all things considered, all that, things considered there, there's I mean, something combusting over there yes exactly and in, in the, their their motorcycles uh, around us you can see the traffic around here and you don't hear anything yeah that's the, the other impressive part honestly at first i thought na, i think the crv is going to win this one well if there is anything if you consider fuel economy what sort of fuel economy <laughs> yeah. were you getting in the in the CRV, if you don't mind me asking. Mixed, I, I think I got 90. <laughs> See, well, that's the thing. This one does about, if you're lucky, 8. And this already includes highway driving. It's got good punch because unlike the CRV, which has a 2 liter hybrid engine, this one has a 2.5 liter turbocharged oh, wow. engine. So, yeah. displacement alone, it's already a notch up, and then it's turbocharged. Yes, uh, the non turbo 2.5 liter engine, for example, will make 194 PS. This one makes 253 PS. It's the most powerful compact SUV in the market. Torque is about 434, if my memory serves right. 434 newton meters, and again, it's quite punchy. Yeah. The, the, this engine is also present in the CX-9. So imagine that what? that this much engine in a much smaller vehicle. I can I, I can see that this will be a popular pick for those driver-centric kind of people. Yeah, I think that is the reason why this. Uh, variant of the CX-5 has proven to be very popular. I mean, we do miss uh, the other turbocharged crossover out there, but since its demise, Mazda's pretty much like just taken over that segment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that, that feels, oh, it feels good. And like, I was enjoying the CRV because it felt very civic. Mm. But like at the end of the day, when it comes to like driving dynamics, I think this one pulls a notch, notch up because that, it, that's more of like like straight. Yeah. This one, like even the turning feels better. I feel the weight, and even on slow speeds when I turn, I can I can feel it. And I I'm one with the car. And for me, that's at least for me, that's one very important aspect for me when it comes to selecting a car. That oh yeah, you want to feel like one with the car. Yeah, I mean at the end of the day, that's why we always tell you guys to test drive a vehicle because you may be impressed by all the bells and whistles that they have, but. You will be spending your car, uh, spending your time in the car, not push, pushing buttons and listening to, radio, to, to the radio. But the most important part is you'll be driving it, so you yes, have to uh, be comfortable. Yeah, yeah. And like, the, it's something that the numbers or the brochures won't show, like how it feels. That's true. I mean, they, this one, it's fantastic. I'm telling you guys right now, coming from the CRV, this feels fantastic to drive in a driver's perspective, mm -hmm. uh, undoubtedly. Yeah, so Nix, I did come out of the parking as well in the, in the CRV, and I have to agree that the steering of the CRV feels, I mean, don't get it wrong, it's solid, responsive, but it also feels more arcadey. It yeah, it's feels light, a bit light, right? light, light and sort of lifeless, to, to, <laughs> to be honest. But yeah, I mean, but what I like about it is the, the quietness. Again, it's a hybrid, it's a two liter hybrid, so with that, it's eerie quiet. I mean, <laughs> I'll probably like shock the pedestrians crossing here or whatever that there's a car behind them, mainly because of the near silent operation. Yeah, and and I'll give uh, you know like reward to the hybrid system of the Honda CRV compared to the other competitors I've tried. This is one of the best I've tried so far. Oh yes, because it is also the one of the more advanced, if not the most advanced out there. Um, compared to the other systems where there's only like one electric motor, this one actually has a dual motor setup. One of the motors, its job is just to generate power for the battery. So the other motor's job is directly connected to the wheels to provide propulsion. So oh. imagine that. It's a very Honda thing, but they really wanted to maximize the efficiency of uh, that's the, why the motors yeah. yeah instead of like having one motor to do two jobs like they, they split the jobs and well that's why it's like really efficient that way yes and that's also the reason why with the CRV it can operate uh, at uh, more more times using the electric motor compared to say the other hybrid setups huh? yeah that's what I noticed uh, like uh, especially like in traffic it's like all of us it, it stays in hybrid mode really long then how do you find the seating because like if the uh, if the CX-5 was more of a cockpit, how do you find this Well, one? this one is a little bit less of a cockpit feel. This one feels a bit more Honda-ish, if there's such a thing. Um, again, very ergonomic. I like the placement of the controls and all that. But it's also it also feels wide. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, the, the entire feel of the car feels much wider than, say, compared to the 
to the CX-5. It's much less cockpit-like in feel. Uh, yeah, what can I say? What I like about it though is that ergonomics is still pretty good. Um, gauges are easy to read. How about the, the, your sense of space? How, the, how much space ah, you're taking? Okay, well, the, the, the CRV, this particular CRV has been the longest and widest it's ever been in its generation. And even compared to the rest of the compact SUV class, the CRV is actually one of the bigger ones. Now, it, I think, without getting a tape mesh out, it is one of the bigger ones. So it really takes adjustment. Uh, you get used to it, don't get me wrong. But for some people with tight garages, they might find the new CRV has grown a lot. Um, for for some, they might find it's a bit size, almost like a mid-sized SUV now. Yeah. So it, it's a it's a hit and miss. I mean, for practical people out there with families, or if you don't mind driving big cars, the, the CRV has it. It yeah. has a big car feel compared to, to the CX-5. And I think that's why, like, I, I guess, like we as people who like who like driving cars, like we're driver-centric kind of people. We like the smallerness better one thing i did discover with this back-to-back -back drive is the way honda and mazda's changed how they define a comfortable ride both vehicles do give a comfortable ride yeah definitely but the, i noticed with the way mazda does it, it it damps it in such a way where if you feel a bump you feel it once and it dissipates it quickly this one feels a bit more traditional in that it's soft and it wallows yeah, wallow, yeah, yeah, yeah. so it, it's it's we it's just amazing how Different car companies have come up with different ways to define what a comfortable ride is. Again, I think it's both best, are comfy. Yeah, they're both are comfy, but I think I think it's best for you to actually test drive the vehicle to find out which is a better match for you, especially if you're going to be driving it in roads that probably you're more familiar. With. Yeah. Okay. So now that we've had back to back, like these two cars, what would you pick, like for yourself? Well, okay, if I probably were only going to buy one, my choice would probably be the CRV. Mainly because oh, it's, wow. it's, it's a hybrid because we are exempted from number coding. It's a lot more fuel efficient. Uh, I like the fact that it's got bag loads of space. And I think because it's newer, it also is a plus factor. But I don't come from a house with just one car. So with that said, my heart will probably go for the CX-5. So it's a oh, it's a wow. mind choice CRV, heart choice CX-5. Oh wow! How about you, Nick? Okay, so I'm very impressed with the fuel efficiency that one, and like for that reason, I do have to agree with you that from that alone, on the practical sense, it's easy to look at the CRV. But even on on a like a, on a one car note, I still might actually go for the CX-5. Wow. Oh, yeah, that's, that's so cool. so that, that, that's a bit of a surprise, cause especially that I I do own a pickup, so like you know, you think practicality is like in my head, mm -hmm. but the CX-5 even being a 2016 model, it has enough practicality on on uh, being a CUV, a compact utility vehicle. Yeah, and I, I see it as such. Uh, yeah, I think next one thing I I forgot to mention is that yeah okay with the CRV you will tend to get better fuel economy so it's more savings at the pump but it might be I'm not sure I have to do the math but it might be negated by the fact that with the with the Mazda you get five years of free service there so oh, that too, that, too, that yeah. might swing things to your favor especially if your car plan will not cover things like a preventive service so yeah so now that you mentioned it so that now even more I'm inclined to get the six five it's between amazing. the two. Yeah, it's just great how we started at thinking that you would end up with a CRV, I would end up with a CX five, and then we end up swapping. We would end up swapping. Yeah. yeah, no, but yeah, like because it it has a it 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 drives like like a Mazda, like so quote unquote. I'm using quote like a sports car, but at the same time, it has just enough practicality. Like if I have to bring it every day, I'm gonna enjoy it and like feel useful at the same time. This one it's like skewed more to super useful, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. but like just like the steering, it's not going to feel as. <laughs> yeah, I think it also is reflective of their positioning in the market or their sales position in the market. The CRV has always been the more popular uh, choice out there. I think it, this is ranked currently the best-selling compact SUV in its class, whereas the the CX-5 usually ranks between three and four. Mm. So I think that pretty much shows you that yeah, for the ninety percent of the people out there, it's the, yeah, it's this <laughs> one. But for the ten percent who understand or who want something special, 
Yeah, says, yeah. CX-5 definitely. If you reach this part of the video, <laughs> you know, you paved your way through watching us talk about these cars, I want to say thank you. And, but more than that, I want to hear your comments. Would you rather get the CX-5 or would you rather get the CRV? Well, until next time, this has been carguide.ph.